stability versus instability. Now, this is also a physics-related component, right? Now, the figure on the left is a guy doing curls with one arm, I mean, with one leg, right? That's me doing a, a, a curl with two legs on the ground. Now, I'm sure you don't have to experiment to discover this yourself. Just intuitively, you would know. There's no way you can work your biceps as hard and as heavy standing on one leg as you would standing on two legs. Stability is required in order to maximally load the target muscles you want to load, which in this case would be the biceps, right? Now, some people will tell you that you're killing two birds with one stone. You're doing two things simultaneously. You're improving your balance, and at the same time, you're working your biceps. Well, the first thing that we have to ask ourselves is, are you really improving your balance? Balance, by definition, is called equilibrium. And equilibrium is your innate ability to, um, to know whether you're standing vertically or on, a, a, on an even surface or on an inclined surface. That's equilibrium. That's an inner ear issue. And we have balance sensors on our feet and in our muscles that basically advise us when we're not standing straight, right? The ability to stand on one leg is something else entirely. You could call it coordination, which is different than equilibrium. Um, but what it's really teaching you is something that's called proprioception, which is basically a skill, right? So a lot of times when we do these exercises on one leg or on a foam pad or on a BOSU ball or something like that, and we notice that we're getting better and better at that, we make the assumption that our balance is getting better. No, your equilibrium is not getting better. Your ability to coordinate on that ball, on that surface, is improving with practice. You're learning how to stand on that surface. When you don't stand on that surface, that learning doesn't apply over here. When you're standing on solid ground, it's a different environment, right? That's like learning to juggle. It doesn't help you play the guitar, right? So there are different skills, right? You're learning a skill, and it might be fun, and it might be distracting, but it's compromising your ability to use as much weight with as good a form as you might otherwise be able to use with stability. So let's look at a couple of other slides so we have a better sense of what this actually means. So when you're standing on one leg, in order to maintain that balance so that you don't fall, right, you need to shift your body mass over the one foot. So look what that does to the standing leg. It shifts it into an angled position, which creates hip strain and knee strain, right? So that can't be ignored. That is a factor, right? And the more resistance you're using, the more that hip and shoulder strain happens, right? So there's a cost. There's an anatomical cost to doing that, along with the fact that you're also compromising the resistance exercise. And the net result is that you're, you're reducing your ability to generate strength. You're compromising skeletal safety. You're essentially not improving your equilibrium. And the proprioceptive skills you're learning are only going to be useful if you're doing activities if you're doing activities that are similar to that, if you're a surfer, if you're a skateboarder, if you're doing anything that simulates that environment, you're getting good at managing that environment, and that's about it, right? I've talked to people who have done those things for a year or two and said to me that they had, you know, no more sense of equilibrium than they had before. They, they can do the activity better. They can stand on the ball better, kneel on the ball better, whatever. But they, in the meantime, they've compromised their muscular gains. So here's another example. All right, so here on the left, we have a guy doing a one-arm press, and on the guy on the right doing a two-arm press. So notice the, the one on the, the illustration on the left. Notice the angle of his forearm, how he's brought that in, right? Now, he had a vertical forearm there. It would lengthen the length of his primary lever. It would pull him to the right more. He would lose his balance and fall off the bench to the left. In order for him to not fall off the bench, he has to minimize the sideways pull. And the reason and the way he's minimizing the sideways pull is by using a lesser weight and also minimizing the lever length. These two things are diminishing the load on his pecs. Right? The guy on the right is able to hold his dumbbells wide apart, forearms vertical, maximizing the load on the pecs. And the fact that he's using two dumbbells simultaneously are keeping him stable. If he did that with only one dumbbell, he would certainly, especially with 100-pound dumbbells, 
certainly fall to one side or the other, right? So you cannot do both at the same time. You cannot maximally load the packs while simultaneously you know, gaining this thing that you think is balanced but actually isn't. Okay, so now I want to tell you kind of a little story here with this image. It's, it's a story that I've in, invented, so to speak, but it's a story that realistically probably happens all the time. Imagine you get a guy, comes to the gym, he's, let's say, 40 years old. He's been out of high school for a while. I'm going to make this just a bit bigger here. He's been out of high school for a little while. He's gained some weight. He hasn't been working out. He feels guilty. Um, he finally digs up the courage to go to the gym. And he goes to his old familiar standby, the flat dumbbell press. And while he's doing that, a trainer comes up to him, a well-meaning trainer, not a dishonest trainer, just a, a trainer with good intentions, but good intentions with economic needs, right? And so this trainer wants to do their job well. They want to be helpful. They also want to pay their rent. They want to see if they can find a client. Logically, the way to, to find a client is to demonstrate your ability to be helpful. So this trainer goes up to this person and says, would you like me to show you an easier or a better way to do that? This person doesn't know what's right or wrong. He assumes the trainer does. So he says, sure. So the trainer takes him over to one of these Swiss balls. And he has him do this thing right here, right? Now, when you're on a bench, there's no balance issue. If you're on a Swiss ball and you have both feet on the ground, you're a tripod. If you're on a Swiss ball with one foot on the ground, you're a bipod right? There's only two points of contact, right? So that means that your side-to-side -side balance is much more unstable. So imagine a tightrope walker who's walking with one of those long poles and it's equally balanced and so he's able to stay on that rope. Well, similar here, right? If, if you're going to do a two-pedal, a bipedal position, you need to keep those dumbbells equally distant from the center to maintain balance. As soon as you do something like this, physics absolutely demands that you fall toward the heavier side, the side that's off balance, right? So this person, in order to prevent this from happening, will do a couple of things. He'll lessen the load. He'll bring his forearm in, as that other person did in the previous slide, to minimize the sideways pull. He'll roll on the ball to the right so that the center of gravity is more here rather than here. So he rolls to the ball. He's doing all these things to prevent himself from falling off the ball, all of which are diminishing the load to the packs, right? Now, if he were to, to ask the trainer, why am I doing this? The trainer would probably say, you're working your core. Most novices, most people that are not in the business would say, What's the core? They would say, oh, well, it's the center of your body. It's everything. It's like, okay, well, let's be clear about this. <laughs> let's be really clear about this. The core are specific muscles. They are the rectus abdominis. They are the erector spinae. They are the internal and external obliques on both of your sides. They are, to a smaller degree, the quadratus lumborum at the base of your spine, little triangular things. And they are your transverse abdominis, which is on your sides. Each of these muscles have a very specific anatomical function. The rex abdominis pulls your torso forward. The erector spinae pulls your spine backward, spinal extension. The internal and external obliques bend you sideways and rotate you. The quadratus lumborum assists in lateral torso flexion. The transverse abdominis doesn't connect to any bones, and so it doesn't produce any skeletal movement, but it basically assists in breathing and assists in biofeedback. It tells us the position of our torso. So when someone says this works the core, you have to ask yourself very specifically, which of those four functions does it do? Does it pull my torso forward? Does it arch my torso back? Does it bend me sideways or does it rotate me? Well, you could argue that this exercise on the previous slide was a sideways rotation, right? That's only one 
of the core muscles. So to say that working one of its core functions is the core is already wrong, right? You are not working spinal flexion to the front. You're not working spinal flexion to the back. You're not working lateral flexion of the spine. You're only doing one thing, and that is challenging torso rotation. However, the instability of this torso rotation is compromising your ability to do that. 